I'm just going to start by saying it has been a month. It has been a month. Um, yeah, we've been in it. As a family, we've been in it. And uh, it's not my story to tell, and so I will not, um, at least at this moment. But um, there has been some, you know, turning points and... You know, this season of mothering has uh, has definitely asked me to just be all in, and so that's where I've been. And today, I have a little time, and I thought I would do a pantry tour, which I've been just craving to do. I missed the garden tours. I missed the end of August. I missed the end of September. I will get out there at some point, um, but I just... I had to let it go. I had to just let it go. There will be a garden next year. There will be more videos. There will be time to record it, to share it, to um, to explore another season. All right, so let me stand back a little bit. What if I do this? Let's go all the way up to the top there, okay? There's a top row of plastic bins and then the baskets the jars, more baskets, more jars, and then at the bottom there's a few things. So I thought I would just walk you through so we could um, just spend some time seeing what like, you know, what a pretty stocked pantry looks like. And I've been working on this for two years and I do not feel like I have got it perfect. I feel like this is the beginning and yet it is something that brings me incredible sense of peace and pleasure and um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's part of it for me is the, is the beauty, creating beauty. That's how I work. That's how I tick. I need beauty and then everything else kind of falls into place. All right, so let me see how we're going to do this. I can certainly pick up the camera at any point, but I'm gonna just try to move it a little bit and just show you what I've got down here. So actually, in the very front here is a little basket of potatoes. So we're just working off of this basket right here. They're um, not, I didn't really dry these all that well. So, you know, they're fine. They're, they just need to be used up in the next couple weeks. And then I have the rest of my potatoes downstairs. We do not have cold storage, so do what we can do. Oh, and I, I also have the other third of the potatoes uh, still in garden bags outside. So they are, um, they're not dug up. They're just in the bags. All right, so then I've got dog food here. This is our dog food. And behind the dog food, I keep all of my vinegars that I'm canning with. So I've got my apple cider vinegar and I've got white vinegars and those are all just tucked back there. And then this basket is for brown paper bags and garbage bags. We don't make much garbage anymore so that feels really exciting. And then here I've just got this little cake tin and um, I just store some odds and ends in there, plastic baggies, things like that. And I have one little basket of onions that I'm working from. And then I have the rest of my onions somewhere else that I'll show you. Okay, and then I have a stool. And the stool is really important because this pantry is really tall. And I wouldn't be able to reach anything. So I have my stool and then it gets me up here and I can get to all this stuff. Without the stool, I was finding that I was not utilizing the top and it was just junky and we had so much crap up there. So now that I've got that, it's just wonderful. And it works for the kitchen because I store all my big bowls up top and I was getting really lazy and not putting them away and now I can just grab the stool and put them away. Then I keep on some hooks, I keep bags, shopping bags, these cute things here um, and that's all over there and then on this side I've got brooms 
brooms, dustpan, and then just a random basket that I hung for Dave because he makes these little piles of things that need to be returned to certain places. And so I just gave him a basket and I think that's gonna work really well. All right, bottom shelf, here we go. Let's see if that will stay. So down here, I just have all the, all the grains, basically. I've got my white rice, which that's what my kids eat. Um, we've got one-to-one -one gluten free flour. We've got quick cooking oats and um, these I tend to use for the chicken. And then I've got my gluten free kind of steel oats back there. We've got quinoa, we've got brown rice, we've got popcorn, and then this macuna powder just somehow didn't end up back in the place where it belongs, so it's just hanging out here. Makuna is like the dopamine bean. You can add this to smoothies. I like to add it to my coffee, um, so that's there. I've got dried pasta, gluten-free pasta. I use Jovial in these containers. These are wonderful containers. I love them so much. They have a seal, so you go like this, and then you can pop it and then seal it. So there's, I've got a bunch of rice pastas, and then all the overflow stuff is downstairs in the basement. More pasta, a jar of cookies, because the kids and Dave love cookies. This bin is labeled kid snacks, and I just put in things that I'd like them to think about. There's granola bars in there right now, there's oranges, there's bagels. And then this is where I keep a bunch of noodles, like we really like, these kind of rice noodle lee things. So we keep a bunch of them in there. We use those a lot. And that is, that's that shelf. Okay, we'll go up a little bit here. Sorry, I don't have a professional photographer here. <laughs> All right, so this is, this basket is basically oils and vinegar that I don't use on a, you know, daily basis. So I've got coconut oil in there. I've got some extra olive oil. I've got balsamic vinegars, things like that. And then at the moment, I just shoved in a couple of dried herbs that I'm not ready to deal with. This this will be fennel seed. I mean, dill seed, sorry. And you can see I've just been shaking it to get the seeds out. Shaking the flour. And I didn't really... I didn't know what to do with it, so I just put it in a plastic baggie, and I've got it in here, and I don't know what this is. I'd have to smell it. I think it's lemon balm. So I just tucked those in there for now. I've got a couple of canisters of cereal because Dave and the kids very much like cereal, and so be it. I have my coffee. I've got some protein powder. They don't really use it anymore, so I'm probably going to take that jar back. These are wonderful gallon jars. You can use them for kombucha. You can use them for fermenting. I like, you know, I get, um, I order Life Boost coffee and it's low acid, which I need for my bladder. And I just put a bunch of them in here and then I work off of that until I get my next order. And then these are, these are my overflow. So I keep most of our, um, dried goods, cans, things like that downstairs. And I like to have a few things that I can just grab, like peanut butter, like coconut milk. Um, you know, I've got the grapefruits in here. I've got a couple more boxes of jovial pastas. I've got some dried fruit, things like that. The coffee that needs to be added to the jar is here. Avocados, sweet potatoes, you know, the peanut butter, some gluten-free uh, baking mix, things like that. It's just random. I needed something to just hold, like the extra bottle of soy sauce, which we might be needing soon, that kind of thing. So that's what these are. And I just think they're really pretty. They hold quite a bit. There is a lot of stuff in those bags, believe it or not. And so it's kind of my overflow. It's just like if I'm cleaning the kitchen and I don't know where to put something, that's where it goes. And when you have ADHD, 
having a place for things is so important and um, and very challenging at the same time. So for me, I need these. It's almost like a junk drawer, but you know that you're gonna find what you're looking for in the junk drawer. So that's really great. Okay, then we're coming to the pretty, 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 pretty place. So here we've got um, maybe half of the jars that, of the food that I have canned between last summer and this summer. So here's the thing about canning that is really cool. We had an incredible cucumber summer last summer. Amazing cucumbers, like probably a couple hundred pounds of cucumbers. And I know that sounds crazy, but for real, the best cucumber year. I mean, we didn't know what to do. We were drowning in cucumbers. I canned so many cucumbers. I canned so much relish. We gave cucumbers away. We gave pickles away. We made quick pickles. We made ferment. I mean, we did everything. So we will be eating off of these pickles. So this is the pickle area. Let's come a little closer. We'll still be eating off of these pickles probably for another, you know, year, if not longer. Now I know canned food, they say, you know, 18 months. You check the seal, you make sure it's okay. I trust it, but you know, you do you. So we've got like bread and butter. We've got dill pickle relish, um, tons of bread and butter. And then these green beans were from this year, but behind it is all the pickles. So you can just see it goes, you know, five deep back here. That's a lot of pickles. And then over here, more relish, a lot of pickles. And then jams. So because I didn't have a huge garden the summer before, but I wanted to learn how to preserve, I wanted to learn how to do all this stuff, I, started with jam. So we went and picked strawberries, we went and picked blueberries, apples, um, got plums from a store, got some organic peaches, things like that. And I just started to make jams and discovered how to do that. And so there are a lot of jams still up here. There's apple pie filling, there is tomato chutney from this year. Um, this is the apple pie filling from last year. I don't even really need to pick apples this year if I don't want to. I might just get a few because I still have applesauce. I still have um, apple pie filling and um, you know I, I can get some apples for fresh eating for the kids but I don't know that I really need a ton of apples this year. And part of that is because we have a pear tree. So pizza sauce. I've got a lot of pizza sauce. We've got things like, these are from last year, Lazy Peach Preserves, S lots of salsa, um, grape jelly, again, from the year before. The salsa is all from this year because we did run out at the end of the year. We had a, a, a pretty good gap so that we were able to miss it. And to me, that's the thing about food preserving is I want to miss it. And so, you know, like you really miss fresh cucumbers but I might not miss pickles so much if I, you know, I'm eating them constantly. I wanna miss things. I wanna miss fresh blueberries, but I love having blueberry jam. I wanna miss fresh apples, but I love having an apple pie filling, that kind of thing. I'm not gonna get fresh plums. You know, I've got some frozen, but I have a beautiful plum sauce that I can put over meat and things like that. I have all sorts of chutneys. And that's kind of how I feel about growing my own food right now is like, I want to make sure that I miss it. I want to make sure that I have a chance to miss things. I have some zucchini in the freezer, but I don't want to go all year eating zucchini up until the point where it's growing again. I want to have a gap. I want to miss it. I want to be eating so many root vegetable stews that I don't want to see them again through the whole spring, right? It's that kind of thing. So that's kind of how I feel about all this. So up, this is basically like, I would say this is more storage than anything I'm working on right now. Um, and we can just kind of grab from it and um, strawberry sauce. So you can see 9, 10, 20. This was from September last year, um, right before my birthday. I made some strawberry sauce so that I could make a strawberry cake. And it was the worst cake I've ever made in my life. 
but I have one jar left of the sauce so I can do something with that at some point. So there's like ginger plum sauce back there. There's spiced plum jam. There's still a little bit of ketchup from the ketchup I made last year. And then I made a new ketchup for this year. So I've got two jars of ketchup still left. Chloe loves this. It's really spicy ketchup, but I made another one that's not quite so spicy. And then the tomato chutney will eat on things like meatloaf. Uh, I love it on meatloaf. I love it on everything. I love tomato chutney so much, so much. And then, you know, we've got relish. We can put that in potato salad. We can put that on a burger. Put it in tuna salad. Um, all right, so there we go. So again, all from last year, like green tomato, apple chutney. So it's just all worked, it's all mixed in together here. Then I've got, um, these were the last of the tomatoes from last year. So I've got four quarts of just, you know, jarred canned tomatoes. And I will probably do a chili with those. I liked to just have a backup in case our tomatoes didn't do well. They did really well. So we're good on that. Okay, moving up. Let's see. I think I'll do this. I'll literally move this up. Okay. So I'll probably have to stand up here. Let's do this. All right, so this basket right here is overflow of things like um, sugar, flour, and oats. So basically like it's a baking overflow here. And then this basket is a huge bulk order that I did from Rancho Gordo of all different beans. I wanted to just know that I had a ton of beans um, I wasn't planning on drying and saving beans and I did and I really love it. Um, I didn't get a ton. I probably got the equivalent of like two bags and um, that's really exciting to me to know that I love it. And so I will do more of that in the future, but we can work through these in the winter. They're just beautiful. I mean, look at these. So this entire basket is beans and that feels just like really good winter eating to me like soups stews rice and beans this is chips that bowl right there this is where we keep chips because we do like potato chips and corn chips these are the cute little containers that i get when i buy peppers at the farmer's market because our peppers didn't do great and i've been saving them because if i decide to have a little roadside uh, market stand I'll be able to repurpose those and that feels like a good a good way to reuse okay so then this we've got soap and sponges in here so that's just overflow kitchen stuff and then I've got some canning supplies here so the very very top shelf I got these bins at Ikea and I just labeled them the label maker is like my best friend so we keep medicines that we want to grab easily here, ibuprofen, any, you know, vitamins, any prescription meds. Then I have some overflow spices, more downstairs. I've got chocolate chips, baking stuff, thickeners, baking supplies, nuts, seeds, cacao. I've got raisins. That one isn't labeled there, so I'm not sure what it is. I've got different sugars. I've got different grains, like little cereals and just rando stuff. And then um, that one on the very end is crackers there. Um, and then I forgot to mention, I've got just this paper towel roll here. So we do use paper towels for animal cleanup and a few other projects. And, um, and then they go right in the compost bin if they're not too destroyed. The animal stuff doesn't really, but... Um, so I don't buy a ton of paper towels, but we've had some big dog messes lately, so that's why there's none there. But I just wanna kinda of say that, cause I know some people are super against paper towels, but there is a time and a place, we use them sparingly, um, but I keep them away from the kids. That's why I wanted to point out that it's in here. If I put the paper towels on the kitchen sink, they would be gone in a day, like seriously, a day. 
All right, so here is, I just got this cute, adorable rack on Etsy and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it. It has held a lot of my drying stuff. So I've got some goldenrod there. I have some just some pretty flowers that Chloe had picked for my birthday. I have an okra drying and then this whole thing was covered recently. So I had hung, you can see there's a few <laughs> leftovers here. I had hung beans, the long beans on here to dry. I had tons of herbs drying on there and I just kind of attached them on. I don't know what its actual purpose was. It would be a really cute spice rack, but I do have another place for spices. So let me just sort of stand back here and give you a zoom out of everything we looked at. I sure am hoping that works because I don't necessarily want to make that video again, though it was fun. So just give you like an up close. So the potatoes, dog food, vinegars, baskets, that kind of thing. Oh, our recycling goes right back there in that little corner space, but I just took it out. Grains, overflow, jars. So it's really been working well. And you know, all of these jars could totally be in another spot. I like seeing them. It is part of the beauty and the experience for me to be near the jars, to have that just, it's just beautiful. And it reaffirms like, this is why I'm doing this. I, you know, I have my salsa for the year. Um, we'll run out, you know, we will spend the spring longing for um, for tomatoes. I've got my chutneys. I've got my pickles. You know, I just, I have, I have these things and their motivation. We're having my morning coffee time and editing the video and it's really long. So I'm going to do it in two parts. So there's sort of a, uh, actual pantry and then all the other places that I'm using like pantry. So I'll make a part two. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you.